subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update uh, november was a very ha- hard month for me for from work point of view i couldn't spend much time so you have to realize that before cat uh, i i remember on the day of cat i had just flown in from mumbai to delhi uh, in the morning My name is Devin. Uh, by profession, I'm a chartered accountant. I did my graduation in commerce from KMC Delhi University. I have a work experience of near about 25 to 26 months post qualification in CA. Uh, I worked in uh, Grand Fountain before this, and currently I'm wor- working with uh, KPMG and M&A Consulting. I had a CAT percentile of 96 uh, with sectional. Uh, as in BA, I got 99.7 uh, in. in lr i had i think 94 percentile and in q i got 81 i got a call from uh, sp gen uh, mdi and yeah. imk i was very disappointed i didn't get call from any other old im and these i actually had applied only to old im and the top like top 6 people seven people because uh, i had a certain salary package and going below that didn't make sense to me at all i'm working as a thing so the are the very the are it is not a it is not a job which allows you a lot of time to study so uh, you have to choose your battles uh, specifically if you want to go into cat so my cat started because of my work i work in a team of mbas and uh, in mna consulting uh, i got a chance to work with uh, the marketing teams and the supply chain team of the two last largest fcg in india so it actually piqued my interest so it started as a weekend hobby kind of thing If I talk about my preparation, so I always knew I was not good at uh, uh, font. So uh, and I didn't have much time also to you know put into it. Font requires like three four hours sitting, and the timing and schedules I have I couldn't put in that hour. So uh, in QA, uh, I always had a target of let's say eighty five to ninety percentile. Every every old I am has a Sectional cutoff of 80 percentile, except I am Lucknow, which has a 85 percentile cutoff. So I had that in mind. So uh, I knew for QA I needed like 16 to 17 to 18 correct answers. So my main strategy was to uh, focus on arithmetic, PNL, uh, my ratio proportion, and everything. I didn't want to go into math, and I didn't go into math. Geometry per se, I never understood it. I still don't understand it, so I didn't get into it. uh and again i got only 81 percentile in uh, qa uh, i had a bad day in qa in unimat cat trip in lrdi lrdi was something i was very interested in but when i gave my first mock i got a 60 percentile in lrdi so lrdi was something i put in a lot of effort in and because it is such an interesting subject you don't it, it you feel like putting in an effort it is something i used to sit on and dwell on weekend and even in lrdi uh, as i'm a ca my Data interpretation skills were much better than my LR skills. Even in that, I focused more on DI because I was expecting two to three DI questions, and uh, I got I think uh, I had 17 correct answers in uh, LR DI, and I think 15 of them were from DI. So even that worked out well. Uh, VA was something I was always good at. Uh, I have always read. I used to write a bit. Uh, so VA was not much of a concern. Uh, I always knew I could score well. Surprisingly, this time day. VA was a quite difficult. It worked to my advantage. To be honest, I didn't work much on RC. My RC was always strong, so I didn't put much, too much effort into it. I used my, the minimal time I had on my LRDI and QA. Also, you have to realize that I could not study much on weekdays. So weekdays, uh, I had to build myself to study after office, like from night 10 to 11, or I had to wake up early. and you know put in one or two hours so again you have to choose your battle choose your battles well stay to your strengths and it all works out in the end in math as i was saying before you have to realize that you for a 85 to 90 percentile you need normally need only 20 correct answers from 34 questions that we have there are certain parts of math there there is a part called general mathematics which uh, cover your arithmetic your algebra your pnl uh, ratio proportions uh, time speed distance and everything it is basic math which we have done in 12 i had not picked up math since last i think 4 years so i didn't dwell into things i could understand or, or i didn't have time to understand like geometry i didn't get into trigonometry i didn't get into so 
journal mathematics usually has the weightage of journal mathematics has actually increased in past three years because when i uh, when i analyze the past two three cat question papers I, the weight of journal mathematics has, has increased a bit so there are usually 25 to 26 questions on journal mathematics uh, which don't require as much knowledge of math as people think it does so i had a target only of 21 to 20, 20 to 21 correct answers i only got uh, i think 14 correct answers uh, and I could still make it. In even in math, you have to break it. If you don't understand hardcore mathematics, if you don't understand geometry, it's not important to do it. Don't waste your time doing it. Rather focus on your strength. At the end, you need a good score. I have a lot of engineer friends who had given CAT previously, so they actually asked me to give a mock without preparation, just to just to, to analyze what are my strength areas. So I gave a mock in a, initially. I got I think 70 percentile. And even in that, I got a very good percentile per se in English. So I knew that it is something I can work on. This is something which can increase my score. And uh, I got very bad percentile in uh, uh, LRDI and Quant. So the thing is, uh, I even I started my preparation only in, I think, May end. Uh, it was not something which I crossed my mind before May end. But uh, after that, I think from June, from July first week, I started giving mocks from Ju uh, July, August, September, I gave mocks at least thrice a month. And uh, from October, I actually, in October month, I gave only mocks. I didn't study much. I had a formula sheet and stuff like that. Because you can't study much in EA. You can't study much in LRDI. That font is the only thing you can actually work on your, or revise per se. So I had a formula sheet for font. That was the only thing I revised and I gave mocks. I think I gave almost seven mocks in October. Uh, uh, November was a very ha hard month for me for from work point of view. I couldn't spend much time. So you have to realize that before CAT, uh, I, I remember on the day of CAT, I had just flown in from Mumbai to Delhi uh, in the morning. Uh, so I, I didn't prepare much in November first day because again work was work was something I couldn't ignore. So uh, the formula sheet and you know the mock actually helped me. I knew what I had to focus on. I knew my strength areas. And I actually focused on, in October, I actually focused on those rather than, you know, working on something new or anything. From my CA prep, I know that at the end, mocks are the only thing that help you. Uh, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of institutes that offer mocks uh, in the market. Uh, some of them are actually much harder than CAT, and some of them actually have CAT level. I didn't want to go uh, into SimCAT, which had a level harder than CAT. It, Suit some people who have a very good preparation. I didn't have much, so I didn't want to discourage myself. So I took uh, I took mocks regularly. I never got very good mock scores, to be honest. Uh, the highest mock score I got was in October. That was 94 percentile. But mocks give you a sense of perspective. They give you a sense of time management, which actually is the key to crack cat. And you also give you a perspective of moving on. Most of the people don't realize it that they get stuck on one question and it becomes like a uh, self-respect contest between that how could I not do it? It gives you a sense of how to move on. That I have limited time and I have to move on from stuff. I cannot get stuck in here. And also if you get a section, if you have a bad day and if you get a section wrong, you need to get how to get out of it. That was something which mocks taught. I think I practice my practice was mostly from my mocks rather than practicing from questions from other books. So uh, I actually spent a lot of time on my mocks. I gave, uh, so usually I used to give mocks on weekends because that's the only time I had for three hours on a stretch. So I used to give a mock on a Saturday morning, let's say uh, 7 to 10. Uh, and then I used to analyze it from, from like 1 to 4. I used to actually spend a lot of time analyzing my mocks rather than going into questions because you have to realize there are certain patterns into everything. Suppose in English, in VA, uh, I, I realized that my RC was good, but I was uh, I was faltering at my jumbled questions and everything. So they, it was something I had to work on. So it helped me in that regard. Even the LRDI thing, which I said earlier, that I tend to focus most on DI rather than LR, uh, even that helped me. And you have to realize the mocks are made by people who have been doing this for 20 years. They know certain patterns. They know that uh, in an LRDI section, you have you can expect you can always expect a Venn diagram Venn diagram push. When such questions repeat themselves, they actually engrave you. You actually ingrain themselves in your mind. So even that helps you. At the end, you know you realize that, huh? Venn diagram is something I can actually work on. This is something I can attempt. 
it actually helps you to uh, analyze what questions you need to pick up even in math for my math mocks were very bad i never got more than i think 80 percentile in math mocks uh, even in that from from even that i could realize that you know phd is something i need to work on a bit phd question or something which are which tend to come a lot there are three to four phd questions the types of it so rather than practicing questions per se from any book i actually advise everyone to give a lot of mock you get a variety of question you tend to you and you and you get to you get to have a sense that you need to do this in 3 hours you have to sit for 3 hours most of us cannot do it most of us after two sections we just need we just falter i used to falter in my first five mocks i couldn't attempt math section because i didn't i didn't have the power to sit for 3 hours so even in that sense you have to sit give it in first shot and you have to analyze your mocks and again you have to analyze your sense area and again you work on it and you analyze this is something i can actually work on this is something i cannot work on so just leave it you need you you, need, you can't do everything you are not perfect specimen so even though pond was not that hard i felt even it i even felt it harder in this way it is said by a medium level but i felt it was hard for me so you have to again you have to prioritize stuff the question all the question cannot be hard you know your strength areas go to them there are two readings of every uh, section per se so in first reading i read I, i used to read a question if i thought that it is my strength area and i couldn't do it i could attempt it if i it, if in first reading i i think i cannot attempt it i used to leave it first it's a very natural feeling to be feel a bit intimidated when uh, your first uh, fears come true so i actually failed once in my ca exam so i know how to get over it uh, there is a certain mental balance you maintain it is not easy to maintain because people put in their hours and months into it but again um, it does not help just faltering in like in math section in uh, this uh, cat 2019 uh, there were first five question i couldn't attempt and i was like what i'm going to do uh, i start from the back i i actually left the first five section and start started doing from the back surprisingly last five question were easier and, and i could do it so if you if you can't do it you have to leave it you need to realize your target that i only need 16 to 70 if it is 16 70 right question if it is hard for me it will be hard for everyone else and cat work on percentile basis i don't need a specified cut off per se i need to be cert- i need to be higher only than a certain set of people so if you are sure of capabilities you have to keep that in mind which is very difficult to keep it but you have to keep keep on reiterating it again and again and again Hi guys, uh, Inside I has come up with an exciting new one-on-one mentorship product where you get to interact with superstar managers from different businesses, different functions. You can ask them everything around your career, your education, your future success. If you are interested, the link is in the description below. Thanks. Mm-hmm.